Coming up on today's episode of the Airborne Unlimited. In Hoff, Duckworth introduced Flight Act. FAA certifies Bell 505 Jet Ranger X. And Snowbirds resume air show schedule. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's June 12, 2017, and this is Airborne Unlimited. U.S. Senator Jim Inhofe and U.S. Senator Tammy Duckworth have introduced S-1320, the forward-looking investment in general aviation hangars, and Tarmac's Flight Act of 2017. The Flight Act will give general aviation airports more flexibility to facilitate infrastructure investment by using existing sources of funding. And Hoff said, our general aviation airports are vital to the aviation safety and positively impact the efficiency of large commercial airports, emergency medical operations, law enforcement activities, and agriculture and small business activities throughout the United States. These airports also manage military-related air operations, which directly supports the readiness of our armed services. To enjoy these benefits, it is vital that our GA airports are equipped to handle the day-to-day -day demands. Duckworth said, As a general aviation pilot, I know how important small and rural airports are to communities across the state of Illinois. That's why I'm proud to help introduce this bipartisan legislation with Senator Inhofe to ensure these airports have the resources they need to support local job growth and economic development. The FAA has fully certified the Bell Jet Ranger X helicopter almost exactly four years after being introduced as the Bell short light single at the Paris Air Show on June 17, 2013. Bell Helicopter will continue to work with other certification authorities around the globe. Through the flight test program, the Bell 505 underwent rigorous certification activities and achieved more than 1,000 flight test hours. The Bell Helicopter Training Academy is also prepared for entry into service with customer training, and the flight training device and coursework are all on track. The Bell 505 offers operators many advantages, including the Safran helicopter engine's Arius 2R engine that incorporates the dual-channel full-authority digital engine control that delivers exceptional performance and reduces pilot workload. A Garmin G1000H flight deck features dual 10.4-inch displays. Through Bell Helicopter's high inertia rotor system, Bell Helicopter has demonstrated exceptional auto rotation capability. With a speed of 125 knots and useful load of 1,500 pounds, the Bell 505 is designed to be safe and easy to fly while providing significant value to the operator. After the break, the Snowbirds are back in business. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. The Snowbirds Canadian Precision Demonstration has resumed its air show schedule after two weeks of intensive training and practice at its home base of 15-wing Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. The team announced on its Facebook page that its first performance would be Dundurn, Saskatchewan at the Dundurn Air Show. Major Patrick Goble, team lead Snowbirds, said, our team has been working very hard practicing and training to bring ourselves back up to our own strict performance standards. 
your Royal Canadian Air Force Snowbirds are ready and very excited to get back to the air show circuit this weekend. We greatly appreciate the support and understanding of the air show organizers, volunteers, and audiences over the last three weeks. Since returning to the air squadron, the demonstration team had flown on average twice per day. The training focused specifically on maneuvers during which issues with keeping formation position had been noted previously. The Snowbirds maintained very high strong safety practices. All appropriate training, procedural, and equipment related safety measures are taken to mitigate the risk inherent and aerobatic formation flying. The team's pilots are highly experienced and trained to respond to challenging situations in the low level environment. Consistent training and practices is required to maintain these vital skill sets. Each week we share with you an online video that one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. Final lift off and left. They make it look so easy and the most recent landing of a Falcon 9 booster for future reuse is not an exception. Search CRS-11 landing aerial footage on YouTube. After these messages, Honda Jet secures Canadian certification. Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray Adventure offers Rotax 912 power, a basic instrument panel, and radios. Fly it away for under $120,000. Visit SeaRay.com for more details. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing a few of those other great stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Transport Canada has certified the Honda Jet opening the door for deliveries to Canada. The certification was granted June 1st. Canadian type certification for the Honda Jet follows approvals in the United States, Europe, and Mexico. To provide sales, service, and support for customers in Canada, Honda Aircraft Company has partnered with Sky Service Business Aviation. The NTSB says that several factors led to the flight crew of Delta Airlines Airbus A320 landing at the wrong airport in Rapid City, South Dakota in July of last year. According to their report on July 7th, 2016, a 2042 Mountain Daylight Time, Delta Airlines Flight 2845 and Airbus A320N333NW landed on runway 13 at Ellsworth Air Force Base, Rapid City, South Dakota. The airplane was not damaged and there were no injuries. The Drone Federalism Act, introduced by Senator Dianne Feinstein last month, could lead to a hodgepodge of local ordinances concerning the operation of drones. Drone attorney Jonathan Ruprick writes on his blog that the bill, which was introduced May 25th, modifies Section 336 of the FAA Modernization and Reform Act of 2012 to require those model aircraft to have the permission of the landowner if they are within 200 feet above ground level or 200 feet above a structure, whichever is higher. The FAA has granted an STC to innovative solutions and support for its non-FADEC turboprop auto throttle for retrofit in the PC-12. Unique to the industry, the IS and S auto throttle manages PT-6 engine, provides for FADEC-like engine protection, and presents engine over torque and over temperature conditions while providing speed envelope protection, easing pilot workload and enhancing safety. SOAR Oregon, a statewide nonprofit based in Bend, has opened a new 9,600 square foot hangar at Pendleton's UAS range 
which will be officially opened at a ribbon cutting on Saturday, June 10th. In November of 2016, Modern Technology Solutions partnered with Soar Oregon on the flight test project for Vahana, an electric self-piloted vehicle being developed by A-Cubed. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now, let's get back to the rest of the news. The FAA has published the Commercial Pilot Airplane Airman Certification Standards for Commercial Pilot Certification in the Airplane Category, Single Engine Land and Sea, and Multi Engine Land and Sea classes. This ACS incorporates and supersedes FAA S. Dash 8081-12C. The FAA views the ACS as the foundation of its transition to a more integrated and systematic approach to airman certification. The ACS is part of the safety management system framework that the FAA uses to mitigate risk associated with the airman certification, training, and testing. Specifically, the ACS associated guidance and test question components of the airman certification system are constructed around the four functional components of an SMS. Safety policy that defines and describes aeronautical knowledge, flight proficiency, and risk management as integrated components of the airman certification system, safety risk management processes through which both internal and external stakeholders identify changes in regulations, safety recommendations, and other factors. These changes are then evaluated to determine whether they require modification of airman testing and training materials, safety assurance processes to ensure the prompt and appropriate incorporation of changes arising from new regulations and safety recommendations, and safety promotion in the form of ongoing engagement with both external stakeholders and FAA policy divisions. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited stream daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest in aviation and aerospace stories anytime at earl-news.net. Keep flying. We'll see you tomorrow.